This video was made possible by EA Game Changers. So guys, last week I was at DICE in Stockholm and I was lucky enough to be able to check out some of the brand new weapons that are coming to Battlefield 5 in the War in the Pacific DLC. And honestly, I think this gun, the Browning M1919, was a huge standout for me. So why is that? Well guys, this is Billy Eat World again, and let's find out. Alright, so to kick off, even though some of the other weapons in this DLC are maybe a bit more well known, believe it or not, the Browning M1919 is the only one that's actually still in service to this day. And that's kind of crazy because it first entered service with the US military over a hundred years ago in 1919, and in that time almost 450,000 have been produced. Essentially what it is, is just an improved redesign of the M1917 machine gun, which was the standard issue MMG of the US military during the First World War. Which again, is pretty crazy because really all it took to modernize it enough to extend its lifespan to over a century was just rechambering to suit the new standardized NATO 7.62 caliber rounds. Now, speaking of calibers, well, in the interwar years and throughout World War II, this gun would have originally been chambered to fire the standard US 30-06 rounds, but as it turned out, it was also a really useful gun for vehicles, and the British ended up using it in a lot of their early war fighter aircraft, like the Spitfire, chambered for their 303 rounds instead. Also, it's worth mentioning that the M250 caliber machine gun was also an evolution of the M1917 as well, and it pretty much operates very similar to the M1919, which again says a lot about how rugged and dependable those early Browning machine guns were, because the M2 is also still in service today and has been ever since 1933. Now, as for the M1919 in game, well, what do I really need to say? It's an MMG, right? And well, they're all kind of a bit broken in their own little way. And this one is definitely no exception because to begin with, it uses a massive 250 round belt. And unlike the MG42, you don't have to upgrade it with a specialization to get that capacity. It only fires at 600 RPM as standard, which is fairly slow compared to some of the other MMGs, but as a trade-off, it's super easy to control, and it's very good out to longer ranges. But in saying that though, if that's still a little slow, well, you can actually spec it out to be better at closer ranges with an RPM buff to 670 RPM, which isn't a lot, but it's still something. The real problem I think with this gun though is the fact that you never need to reload it. Obviously that's not a problem for you, but it's really not that fun for everyone else. MMG spam is already pretty bad in this game and well, this gun allows you to sit back and lock down positions for as long as you want. The only danger is really to get headshotted by a sniper who can see you off in the distance. And even then, if they're a little bit closer, you can literally out-snipe snipers a lot of the time before they can kill you. And because of the passive spotting mechanics MMGs have, you don't even need a scope. You just aim at the Dorito. You can see that in a lot of these clips. And like I said, it's fun if you're the one holding the gun, but trust me, it's super annoying. And it's pretty much unbearable on some of the more close quarters maps. Now, with that being said, as for specializations, well, as you can see, all the close quarters options run down the left-hand side, and most of the more longer range options are over on the right. And personally, I don't mind having a bit higher RPM, so I'd probably lean towards the left-hand side, but in saying that, I can totally see why you'd want to go down the right and get that improved bipod as well. Like I said, it's already pretty decent at longer ranges, but it's going to be even more of a laser beam if you do go down that path, but with that being said, the only one you really don't want to pick over there on the right is the buff to the reload speed. Because like I said, you're not going to need to reload this gun very often anyway, and it's kind of just pointless. But anyway, to finish up, all in all, I think this gun definitely looks, feels, and plays like an iconic MMG, and that's a good thing. And it's easily one of the better guns in this new patch of Pacific Weapons, so definitely no problems at all recommending that you guys go out and give it a go. But I don't know, it kind of makes me wonder if this game really needed this gun. DICE already knows the community has got a problem with MMGs, and adding more good ones like this might not be the best option. And I mean, obviously the Pacific just wouldn't have been the same without this gun, but, well, let's just hope there's more MMG fixes coming down the line, and it might not be such of a problem. 
But anyway, guys, that just about wraps up this video. So as always, make sure you let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And just remember, I've put a bunch of videos up on this channel in the last few days featuring new Pacific content. So if you want to check out more of that before it releases in the next few days, please go over and check those videos out. As always, though, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And please feel free to check out the links in the description if you want to see any more of these videos. And also don't forget, you can find my Twitter and Discord links down there as well if you want to keep in touch. And as always, until next time, see you later and have a good one.